Are you looking for a better way to manage all your passwords? Today, we're going to take a look at PASS, which is the standard Unix password manager. Let's get started. So, managing your passwords. There are a number of options out there as far as password managers. Probably the most popular that the general public tends to use is something like LastPass. LastPass is a very popular service. It's got a web interface. If that site is ever compromised, everybody that uses LastPass would be completely hosed. So I, I personally wouldn't use LastPass, but LastPass seems to be pretty secure. They don't really have any major compromises that I know of. I could be wrong about that. KeePass is a very popular like desktop client and also has mobile clients as well. But KeePass is really interesting because it stores all your passwords in a local file on your machine, an encrypted file. The problem is all your passwords are in that single encrypted file. If you ever lose the key to it, you're kind of hosed. And KeePass, what happens if KeePass goes away one day? How do you open that file? Well, the good thing is KeePass is open source and there are other programs that use the KeePass encryption decryption method. So you could use those programs, I guess, to get back into that file. But still, what about a password manager that adheres to the Unix philosophy? Is there such a thing out there? Well, Pass has been around for many, many years. Pass is very popular among Linux enthusiasts, especially those that prefer to do things in the command line. Pass, the standard Unix password manager. So it's very simple, follows the Unix philosophy with Pass. Every single password you enter into Pass is saved as a file, a single file that is GPG encrypted. And that's kind of neat. All your passwords are saved in their own, in this directory, dot password dash store. You can edit the password store using your typical shell commands. So pass is really, really interesting. There's a number of extensions to pass, depending on what kind of desktop environment, what kind of web browser you use. Pass actually has a, a ton of extensions, so it's very extensible. We're going to get into some of that too. But first, let's get into installing pass. I won't bore you with a lot of the technical details, but let's see it in action. So let's get started with pass. We'll start with the installation. Now I'm going to do this in a VM. I created this VM just for this video. This VM is Arco Linux Qtile. It's a fresh install, so pass is not already installed on the system. Why am I showing you this in a VM instead of my host machine? Well, I may show you some stuff on my host machine here in a minute, but a lot of the basic stuff I really can't show you on my host machine because it might share the GPG key with you on camera. You guys don't need to see my GPG key, obviously. It also may show you some of my passwords for various websites that I have passwords to. I can't share that with you, obviously, on camera. So we created this VM. We're going to set up pass. I'm going to create some fake accounts at websites that I don't visit. And ju just for purposes of this tutorial, so obviously the first thing we need to do is install pass. So I would just pull up a terminal in whatever Linux distribution you're on. And then I'm on an Arch-based system. So I use pacman to install everything. So sudo pacman dash capital S pass. If you're on an Ubuntu or a Debian based distribution, you would need to sudo apt install pass or use DNF and Fedora or whatever package manager on whatever distribution install the package pass. Hit enter. It's going to require a root password anytime you install or remove uh, software. You do have to enter a root password and then confirm with yes or no. And boom, just like that. It's a very small program. Let me clear the screen here. The next thing most people would do just naturally after installing a program is to try to run it. So let's try to run pass. We're going to get an error. Password store is empty. Try pass init. Well, the terminal says try pass init, so naturally the next thing you're going to do is type pass init, right? <laughs> that must be what you do. Well, not exactly. You're going to get an error about that because that is not the proper way to run that command. The actual way to run that command is pass init, and then in quotes, it doesn't matter, double quotes, single quotes, your GPG key which we're not going to have a legit GP key just yet. <laughs> so how do we get a GPG key? Well, assuming the GNU PG package is installed already on your system, you need to run the following command, GPG space dash dash full dash generate dash key. Run that command. 
Now it's going to ask you some options on exactly what kind of GPG encryption or what kind of GPG key you want. Just go with the defaults for now. So if you want to read more about GPG, I would suggest reading the Arch Wiki page on it. I'm just going to go with all the defaults, hit enter three times, then Y for yes to confirm all this. It's going to ask for a real name. It needs to be at least uh, five or six letters long. So I'm going to go, typically I go with username at hostname for my computer. I'll go with DT, you know, at VBox in this case. Uh, email address, I'm not going to type my real email address. I'll just DT at VBox for now for that comment. I'm not going to enter a comment. We can skip some of this. And then it's going to ask you, do you want to change anything you already entered or O for OK, Q to quit. O for OK. And now please enter the passphrase to protect your new key. I hope I remember this later. It's not, not a password I ever use. We're just going to make something up on camera. We got our GPG key. All right, so where is the GPG key? Well, in the terminal output, you got this line right here, GPG colon key, and then this right here. That is your key. Now, what happens if you had closed the terminal, went on to something else, or cleared the screen? How would you get your GPG key? Well, you need this command here. Let me clear the screen. For example, clear the screen. Where'd my GPG key go? Now I need to get it. Well, you GPG dash dash list dash secret dash keys dash dash key ID uh, key ID dash format space and then all caps long. <laughs> And that generates some information here, but what you really need is this right here. This information on this line right behind the uh, slash here. That is also your GPG key. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And my wallpaper is changing. <laughs> By default, all Arco Linux has variety set to change the wallpaper every few minutes. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to do that here in this VM I created. All right, so now that we have the GPG key, let's run pass init again. Remember, pass init though, we need to give it the GPG key in quotes. Hit enter. It created our password store, password store initialized for our GPG key. So now when you run the pass command, you do have a password store. There's nothing listed in it because we haven't actually saved any real passwords yet. How would you do that? Well, you do that using the following commands, pass, space, insert, space, and then whatever website you visit on a regular basis that you need a password saved for. What do you go to all the time? Maybe something like Facebook. I don't go to Facebook all the time, but you guys might. So pass, insert Facebook, just hit enter. It's gonna ask you for your Facebook password. All right, so we just entered our password for Facebook. Now when I run the pass command, you see I have password store and then underneath it, facebook.com, right? And we could just do that for anything. So. Pass, insert, Twitter. If I had a Twitter account, you know, we could go ahead and save your Twitter passwords, right? And now when we run pass, we have, you know, facebook.com, twitter.com. Now let's talk a little bit about the encryption for this. So we saved the passwords for facebook.com and twitter.com. They're saved to their own text file, basically. Where are they saved? Well, they're saved in the password store. So let's cd into dot password dash store. If I do an ls, you see I have facebook.com.gpg, twitter.com.gpg, so they're saved as .gpg files, which means they're, of course, encrypted. So if I wanted to open one of them in a plain text editor like Vim, say facebook.com.gpg, obviously I can't read this, right? It's, it's encrypted. I can't get my Facebook password just from reading that file. We have to decrypt it. Now I will show you how to decrypt this file using gpg in case you ever need to to actually do this gpg space dash d for decrypt and then the name of the gpg file you want to decrypt you hit enter you have to enter your passphrase for pass the secret passphrase that we created i hope i remember it again it's not a password i would typically use you hit enter and if you enter the right password now the terminal output will spit out my super secure password for facebook.com which was dt yeah, don't use DT as a password. I would uh, do something a little longer. It needs to include some capital letters, some lowercase letters, some numerals, 
and probably a special character or two. Just pick anything, uh, question mark, exclamation point, whatever you want to throw in there. All right, so I cleared the uh, the terminal output here, cleared the screen a little bit so we can see what's going on. Now that I've entered my GPG key, your computer will remember it for a while. All I need to do is just pass and then the name of whatever key I'm looking for, facebook.com in this case, just tab complete, and it enters my password here in the terminal, right? It just spits it the output out as DT. Or I could pass, and I did twitter.com as well. That is how you retrieve a password. Obviously, you can only retrieve the password if you remember the key passphrase you entered when you first initialized pass. Of course, that's not true, right? <laughs> what happens if you forget your pass phrase, you know, the master passphrase? Well, we just showed you how to decrypt something with the GPG anyway, because those text files are here. They're encrypted, but you can decrypt them. You should be good. Now let me close this VM, and I am going to show you pass in action on my host machine. Now, retrieving your passwords in a terminal, most people don't want to do that all the time. That's not really what I want to do. I like living in the terminal. If I'm already in the terminal, yes, it makes sense just to retrieve that password in the terminal. But what are you using passwords for most of the time? You're using them for websites, right? And I don't want to, you know, I'm in the browser. Oh, what's my password for this site? Let me open up a terminal, you know, get my password, copy it, then go back to the browser. No, I, I want something a little bit easier. Well, again, Pass has a bunch of plugins. If I scroll down the page here, you see extensions for Pass, compatible clients for Pass. One of them is Pass Menu, which is a basically a, a D menu script that interacts with pass it you don't have to actually install it either pass menu is now part of pass you also have clients for android i haven't actually tried this but android password store i don't know if that's actually in the official google play store but i know you can install it with something like f droid looks like there's ios apps again i i don't own an iphone i can't confirm that we definitely have plugins though for your browsers firefox and chrome both have plugins the firefox plugin is called pass ff I've already got PassFF installed here in Firefox. Let me show you how that looks. So let me go to my desktop here and with D menu, I'll launch Firefox. I'm going to open a new tab here. One of the websites I go to all the time, not all the time, but I'm a member of the Free Software Foundation. Maybe I want to go hang out on their forums, you know, read something. Well, now that I have PassFF, the Firefox plugin for PassFF, you know, it recognizes I have fsf.org saved as a password. You see the P behind the forms here? If I click it, it'll say, hey, you have a pass for fsf.org. Do I want to actually fill out these forms? And if I just click that, of course, I have to enter my super secure passphrase for my host machine, which is quite a bit more secure than what I did in the VM. So let me type this. And assuming that's right, now if I Tell it to autofill, it'll autofill. By the way, that's not my real username. <laughs> I changed it for purposes of this. So, but it will autofill this. So you could either go to the tab up here, click that, or right here in the forms, click that, or they have a key binding in Firefox for pass FF. Control Y, I believe. Control Y pulls this down. So you don't actually have to use the mouse to navigate with it. So that is pretty cool. So you don't never need to open a terminal. Now the other thing you could do. I, of course, use D menu. So we mentioned pass menu was an extension. You don't have to install it. It's included in the pass program by default. I have pass menu set to run with a key binding super shift P on my keyboard, I believe. Yeah, and this runs pass menu. You see, I've created two entries in pass on my machine at fsf.org and mastodon.technology. I saved my passwords for those two sites. <laughs> I just did that this morning. I just installed Pass this morning. Actually, I thought it was so interesting, though. I felt the need. I, I really needed to make this video. So what happens if I enter, you know, I highlight mastodon.technology and hit enter? Nothing. Hmm. Well, you think nothing, but let's do this in the terminal so we get some output. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on. Let's run pass menu here in the terminal so you can see the output. And now, of course, D menu launched at the top. Again, I'm going to select mastodon.technology. I'm going to hit enter. 
And in the terminal we get output, copied mastodon.technology to the clipboard. We'll clear in 45 seconds. What does that mean? It means my password for mastodon.technology is now in my clipboard for 45 seconds. Now I could go to a website and just paste that password. How cool is that? Of course, I didn't need to do that in the terminal. Again, Super Shift P is what I had this set to. So if I needed my password for uh, fsf.org right now, I just hit enter. It's copied to the clipboard. I can go back to my browser and just, boom, paste it right in the website. So that is just some of the basics with Pass, how to get started with Pass. Uh, really simple to use, actually. I think most people are kind of scared of pass at first because it seems scary for one thing it's command line for one thing it uses gpg encryption but if you know just a few basic commands or if you forget the commands the arch wiki page for gpg has got you covered so you know if i run pass here this is my host machine you know nothing i'm not sharing any super secret stuff with you here because you guys probably already know i'm a member of the free software foundation and all of you guys know I use Mastodon, so knowing that I visit those sites doesn't give you any information. You don't have usernames or passwords, although right now I could, you know, pass, you know, FSF if I wanted to and get my password. But it would return that password here on camera if I did it because I had just entered my key phrase a, a while ago. Those of you that love typical graphical environments like GNOME, KDE, you live in a graphical web browsers of course like Firefox and Chrome you have the Firefox and Chrome plugins you really don't need to do much in the command line with pass if you don't want to those of you that love the command line obviously pass makes a lot of sense obviously if you love D menu pass makes a lot of sense obviously since every password is saved to its own file if you decrypt those files you know you could just they're plain text once you decrypt them you could edit them in something like vim or nano or whatever so you, you can do a lot of really cool stuff with pass it's a little more flexible i think than other alternatives like keypass although i think keypass is great too i've installed keypass before and played with it it's a fine program but pass i think because it's a little simpler such a small program as well and it does kind of adhere to the unix philosophy i think long term i think i'm going to start using pass for those of you that want to dive a little more deeper into pass of course i'm going to link to the home page for pass in the show description but of course as always just read the man page man pass and the man page is kind of large let me uh, zoom out here so you can kind of read the text a little bit better but it is a little lengthy man page not too lengthy you page down about 10 times and you'll get to the end but it's pretty good documentation you should be able to figure it out and before I go this show was made possible by Ansem Chris the other Chris Douglas Dylan Jack Lee or Philip Rob Robert Tony and Willie they are the producers of the show my highest tiered patrons over on patreon without these guys this video about pass would not have been possible I want to sincerely thank each and every one of those guys also brought to you by that that long list of names you see there on the screen those are the supporters of the channel they support my work over on patreon I want to sincerely thank each and every one of those guys as well if you'd like to support the channel please consider doing so you'll find me at distrotube over on patreon Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.